Good afternoon. Maybe we should take this off again, right? We had feedback last time with that. There we go. All right. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about some hatch and egg handling um, issues. We heard a bit about that, and it seems like a lot of these talks are really going together um, fairly well. A little bit of overlap, but I think each, each of us can contribute to different um, aspects of it. But this is a very important part of um, the whole picture, uh, I believe. I looked at for a number of years, um, seeing particularly in the U.S. market, a lot of money spent in breeder houses. Let's get the best breeder houses. We have some really good breeder houses, good environmental control, good facilities with an eye to raise a good breeder. And then we get into the hatchery and you know, we may not spend as much on the hatchery, but we, the technology is there um, to you know, provide um, the, the conditions necessary for the hatching eggs. It's, it's all there. What I was noticing was that time between when the egg is laid and the time it gets to the hatchery, it, what we were seeing is a lot of neglect. You know, it just, here's a little room. You know, in the U.S., our eggs will sit on the farm for two or three or four days before they're picked up, and there wasn't a lot of um, uh, effort put into controlling that environment. So um, we started doing some work, and this is a lot of what I'm going to talk about. Less about storage at the hatchery long term, more about the conditions the first few days um, before we move into incubation. Okay, um, again, Matt Arkansas, and I know we've had, uh, just all had lunch and had talks about a siesta and uh, stuff, so hopefully all can um, stay awake and, and, uh, and maybe uh, write some notes down for a little bit later. I know after that lunch I was kind of feeling like I wanted to find a pillow and take a nap somewhere. Um, Again, I'm going to start and talk a little bit about that fertilization process, those that might have missed it before, mainly to emphasize a couple things. And these things were brought up earlier, we heard these, um, about you know, what this hatching egg is. It's not just an egg, it's a, it's a developing embryo. Again, fertilization occurs right after ovulation. We talked about that earlier. Um, the ovum then passes down the oviduct, egg is formed, so we have um, a situation where our egg is where our egg is formed with a body temperature sufficient for embryo growth. I believe our last presenter talked about that is that the embryo begins to develop at the time of fertilization. And I've always thought this was very important to think. When we are handling a hatching egg, remember we are not handling a hatching egg that at some point we're going to put in an incubator to grow we're handling a hatching egg that already started growing and so this is kind of where I'm leaning to as we talk about this is a growing um, developing egg again we have 20 to 40 thousand cells think about how um, growth occurs in our last presentation talked about the temperature that's there and what happens when temperature is higher on any growing embryo think metabolism tends to speed up when temperature is lowered it slows back down again but the bottom line is, is it is a growing um, still a growing embryo we don't want to see it stop and this is why we see our donut shaped fashion on our fertile egg we take this egg you can't see this picture very well and put it in an incubator you can see this going back to this little donut shape give a little bit of time we continue to see development so um, this is kind of just a, a small picture of where that growth is going to start. So the, this truly is what it is. It's the embryo beginning to grow. Okay, factors which influence hatchability. Obviously, breeder flock and fertility. Um, when we're looking at hatchability, you, you cannot overlook the impact of the flock itself. You cannot have a successful hatchery and hatchery program without a good breeder program. We have genetics of the bird, even though they change, we manage what we have, we manage with them. And sometimes we have to manage one strain a little different than the other, but in any case, we manage um, the genetics of the birds we have. Um, Alternate our management, our housing, and the equipment all in the breeder flock itself. So we know this has a pretty significant effect on hatchability. Um, and then of course the hatchery itself. Egg handling is the other factor in there.